My people, my people, my people, welcome back to Crypto Comics for another installment of Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season. And today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We've been going through the awesome entertainment universe here recently. And today I wanna go through a bunch of books rather rapidly because the, these are some books that really were not a hit for me personally. And I don't think that they were a big hit for fans because they, they all contained either just one or two issues, predominantly one issue. And uh, it all starts here with this awesome preview of 1999. Awesome Entertainment began, if I'm not mistaken, in 98. It might have been the very tail end of 1997. And uh, Rob had big plans. Look at that. There you go. Alex Ross uh, penciled that bad boy. Supreme is one of those comic books. Uh, there was Alan Moore began his run on Supreme, which is the stuff of legend, if you do not know. People rave about Alan Moore's Supreme run. It began at Image, continued at Awesome Entertainment with uh, the few final issues of Supreme, and then he did a six-issue miniseries called Supreme The Return. Then Supreme went back to Image Comics for a few issues. Uh, Alan Moore wrote the, his final issue again back at Image, Eric Larson doing the art, and then Eric Larson took over the writing and art duties on Supreme for a few issues because he had some fun stories he wanted to tell. Supreme, Supreme, uh, kaboom. This is just like, you know, the little tease of what's coming up, obviously. And as a Rob Liefeld uh, completionist, you know, I felt compelled to buy this, especially when it was only 50 cents, right? I mean, you can't beat 50 cents. Even for a book like this, this uh, this is Lionheart. Let me let me explain. This is Lionheart, and we will get to Lionheart uh, here in the very near future on Crypto Comics. Then Alan Moore did a two, technically three issue run on Youngblood. The art here is by Steve Scross, and I I hate his art. I hate his art. It's terrible. Uh, it absolutely turned me off from buying this Youngblood series when it first came out because I could not bear to see one of my favorite superhero teams of all time drawn so horribly. I mean, look at this trash art. Look at this garbage. This is embarrassing. There's nothing heroic about this. There's nothing that, you know, captures the dynamic awe of Rob Liefeld's time at Image Comics with Extreme Studios. This is a, a joke in comparison some sort of parody of a real comic. This is a, a low-rent version of Vogue called Twilight. Forgive me if I don't even know her powers because I don't care. This is Doc... This is Doc something or another. I can't remember this chick's name. This is See, this is just the worst. And this continued in Youngblood issue two. Look at that. I mean, would anyone be compelled to buy this? Seriously, do you think anyone would be compelled to buy this? But there's one thing I want to point out in the back of this one real quick. Look at all those covers. I made a dozen covers for this thing. And uh, there's very few that actually uh, intrigue me. This one intrigues me. This makes her look cool. Here is uh, Shaft is drawn by Rob Liefeld. You couldn't see anything more different. You know, what a, what a fraud this would have been. This is a nice cover. This means nothing. Yeah, whatever, the chibi cover, who cares? There's something kind of unique about this. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Okay. Oh, Regex. We're gonna we're gonna get to that in the future. Same with this Scarlet Crush. Promise. And this continued into a second issue. Still written by Alan Moore. The story might be wonderful, but the art turns me off so much that I cannot manage to read this. I've owned this for, you know, a, a decade. And I, I still haven't actually read it because every time I open it, I'm just like, this looks absolutely terrible. I can't imagine a comic book looking worse than this. I, I hope you enjoyed this issue of Youngblood. I, I don't know, Rob. I, I still haven't read it. Next, Dandy in the Underworld. Get real. This isn't appealing to this isn't appealing to any testosterone filled young man who's looking for high-impact art when they buy a comic book. Though there's more Regex. They promoted this Regex like you wouldn't friggin' believe. Endless, endless promotion of Regex. 
There's Hip Flask again. They Finally, there is an issue one half, an exclusive black and white preview available only at the San Diego Comic-Con. I'm going to have to track this down, dang it. MyComicShop.com is the only place I'll be able to find that. Deity, I do own this. I should read it, finally. It's been 10 years, right? Oh, and then they're teasing Youngblood issue number three, but, you know, that's not actually going to come out. The Mark, that's not actually going to come out either, whatever that was. Lots of ideas. And then you have Awesome Adventures number one, which was supposed to be sort of an anthology book for Alan Moore. Uh, Rob Liefeld basically, it seems, hired Alan Moore to exclusively write for him and his characters. Uh, but once again, we're seeing, you know, this Steve Scross art that does nothing for me. And what's interesting is, you know, here it looked, this all looks all right. But then you flip the page and you're just like, what is wrong with his face? What are you doing, Steve? Why would you do this to me? Why would you do this to Youngblood? Don't they deserve more respect than this trash art? I like to think that they do. And this, I believe, is technically Youngblood issue number three. I have a feeling that they were brighter and brighter. Oh, it's okay. I get it. Next, Young Guns. But you're not going to get that Young Guns, unfortunately, for you. Because there were a lot of, uh, a lot of hopes. A lot of big hopes for awesome entertainment. And uh, not a lot of it was realized. This is interesting, though. This is Black Seed by Dan Frega. If you recall when we did the review of the Asylum Anthology book from Maximum Press, Black Seed was featured in that, but then it was Black Flag. Now there's a much bigger manga fill to it, and it's called Black Seed. But that dang monkey, he's still around, that stupid friggin' monkey. And, you know, looking at some of this is interesting because Dan Frega was really trying to pioneer digital backgrounds into comic books. And what I'm guessing this eventually became was not Black Seed. I'm not saying it was the same thing, but this whole concept of, you know, uh, digitally created backgrounds, these 3D models, uh, this was actually realized in Dan Frege's comic book, The Gear Station, which also didn't actually have a conclusion, was canceled before it concluded, but is absolutely a mesmerizing comic book for me. If you love fantasy comic books, check out the gear station. You can actually watch uh, our review of the gear station that we did. Man, that was that was probably like a year ago, but it's still in the playlist. Check the Image Comics playlists for the gear station. You'll find it. Very easy to find. And this is, uh, you know, what Dan was working on, but it certainly seems like uh, this was never actually realized. And when you see all the comics they talk about, War Child Merlin, also not realized at Awesome Entertainment. When you see all of these, it does make you wonder, where are the scripts? Were the pages completed? What happened? Why did this not get put out? Uh, does it still exist somewhere? Another one is Brigade. Only a single issue was put out by Awesome Entertainment. Our, uh, my, my favorite lady friend, Spice, from the pages of The Fighting American is featured in this. Here's our boy Jeff from Kaboom. Here's Bad Rock. This is Kid Supreme, and this is a chick I'm not familiar with. Uh, written by Larry Stucker, penciled by Dietrich Smith. And these pencils are okay. This isn't a style of artwork that I necessarily care for, uh, and it certainly isn't something I would put on a superhero book. Uh, art like this could be suitable for something like Kaboom. But when you're dealing with pure superheroics, it just seems to me that you would want someone who can capture the dynamic impact that all of those early image titles did. You know, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Valentino, Eric Larson. That kind of art is much more preferable. This is something more, you know, teenage manga type story, like Kaboom. And so this just... This just pretty much disappointed me. And then you get a preview of Century, which I literally have no idea what this is, but you also see uh, something else they had planned that was never realized, which would be Extreme Forces, Supreme, Youngblood, and Glory. The heroes of the awesome universe unite to combat a terrible evil that threatens their very existence. By Jeff Loeb, Ian Churchill, Rob Liefeld, and Norm Ratman. 
Again, not ever realized. How much of this was drawn? That's, these are just the questions I will have for Rob Liefeld. If I could ever interview Rob Liefeld, I would ask so many questions that only Rob Liefeld fans would want the answer to. Like, what happened a century? Look at this. We have pages that were completed. Did this become a comic? If you know, tell me in the comments below. I would, I would be very interested in finding out. Yeah. Um, we're going to keep going, though, here. Because Rob, you know, not only brought back Youngblood, not only brought back Brigade, he also brought Chapel into the awesome universe for a minute. This is a, a war story, espionage, if you will. Might be something up your alley. Art by Robert Napton, which is a benefit. It's nice to see some standard superhero art in a, a comic book like this. Though it does feel like it was rushed a little bit when it was drawn. They were really trying to pump stuff out. Like, see, this is not the level of quality I, I expect from a comic book of this nature. Oh, that's wicked. But this exists. Chapel Animation Cells, coming soon to a comic shop near you. Uh, because Youngblood didn't actually get a didn't get a, get a cartoon. They sure tried hard. Kaboom. We've talked about that. Get ready to rage. Youngblood is coming to PCs and Playstations this November. If Youngblood did come to the PlayStation uh, and Microsoft Windows, please let me know in the comments below. I had no idea that they had a video game. If they actually did have a video game. You know what else? Rob Liefeld also brought another character from uh, Maximum Press over, and that would be the lovely Evangeline. This was just a single issue also with a script by Robert Napton, artwork by Dan Fraga. And this artwork is actually really, really nice. Dan Fraga's style evolved so much. You can really chart the evolution of Dan Fraga's comic book career right here at Crypto Comics in the Image Comics playlist. You can see uh, his work on Black Flag. You can see it evolve. Uh, over the years, he became a hell of an artist. And this is, uh, this actually, this story was not bad. It's just, it's a single issue. And here we see stuff they were also planning. A Coven Regex crossover. Uh, the Allies. I wish this would have came out. It never did. Still disappointed in that. Let me see something interesting here. Check that out. You know, this is uh, something you might want to, you might want to track this down. That's up to you. Awesome adventures with the young blood. Who cares? You know, some little teases here about what's going on. Evangeline behind the scenes. And all of these are very interesting to read in this, to just as you chart the course of Rob Liefeld's career, these uh, write ups in the back of every single comic really, really are helpful and insightful. God, guaranteed ship date of April 27th. Bowl. That's bull. But, you know, this is a nice wraparound cover. There you go. How about that? But wait, there's more. Glory. This is an interesting story also. This uh, and very stunning cover. Very stunning cover by Brandon Peterson, who also drew the pencils for this. This is by Alan Moore. Glory is just a waitress in this. But she's also a goddess. And this is just a very simple, self-contained story. Uh, there are additional issues of Glory written by Alan Moore. I will talk about those in a video in the near future. Just not this video. She gets this bracelet. And you can tell like what this bracelet is going to do. But it doesn't actually really get used. It's just the story ends. And the last half of this dang stinking book is just a sketchbook. Little previews. Which is interesting and fun. I like these too. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I really like this. This is this is lovely. This is Lilith. Supreme. There's William Jefferson Clinton right there. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Here you see Bill and Hillary going to try to murder a person. I mean suicide them. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, this is it. Witchblade Tomb Raider. Didn't know. Hmm. Cool. But wait, there's still more. Check it out. Prophet had a single issue. 
where he wakes up. This is actually really beautiful. This is a really good story. And I would, I would suggest this for any prophet fan who doesn't have this in their prophet short box. What makes it perhaps more fascinating, not just this cover by Todd McFarlane, this. This is Joanna Prophet. This is the daughter of John Prophet. And they had some plans here, clearly, for this lovely lady. This is uh, incredible artwork by Chad and Eric Walker. Brother combination. That's really neat. How often do you see that in comics, eh? As you can see, she is just glorious. And it's a shame that this did not get realized further. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Image did not uh, try to pick this up and run with it when they brought Prophet back for a period of time in stories that look like absolute trash. Joanna, help me. P please help me. Oh, father? What is going on here? I wish I could have known, because it was to be continued, but it never was continued. This was Prophet Legacy. If you go to mycomicshop.com, there's Prophet which you'll see with this cover, I believe, and then Prophet Legacy. Don't get confused. It's the same book. It's just a flip book. Last but not least, Six String Samurai. This is an independent film that was released by Palm Pictures. And for some reason, for some reason, Rob loved this movie and decided to make it into a comic. And I'll tell you, I've seen the movie. The comic is much more enjoyable than the movie itself. In 1957, the bomb dropped and the Russians took over what was America. The last bastion of freedom became a place called Lost Vegas, and Elvis was crowned king. After 40 rockin' years, the king is dead. Every guitar-picking, sword-swinging opportunist, including death himself, hears the call echoing across the wastelands. Vegas needs a new king. Penciled by John Stinsman and Dan Frega. It actually looks really nice. Uh, and this comic book was entertaining to me because it's just offbeat. Uh, personally, I don't know if Rob had to spend any money to get the rights to make this into a comic book. Here he talks about why he loves it. Uh, I wouldn't have personally. The, the movie was not great. Rob saw the original five-minute short that later became a feature film uh, and was enchanted by it. Me, not so much. But it does make me want to bring up another time Rob Liefeld attempted to work with Hollywood on a comic book. And that would be this, which will be our next review here on Crypto Comics. This is Menace by Jada Pinkett Smith. And we'll get into that tomorrow. So stick around here at Crypto Comics. If you like our reviews, please share them with your friends. Then hit that thumbs up button. If you're new, subscribe. Hit the ding dong for notifications. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this assortment of interesting comic books. And don't forget to keep on keeping on every day right here at the one, the only, the leader in totally awesome comic book reviews on YouTube. Now we're not going to show you that one. Yeah, we'll pass on that one too. Let's just look at good covers. There we go. The leader in totally awesome comic book reviews. Your boy, Crypto comics. See you tomorrow.